Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop on YouTube. Today I'm just going to do a quick little breakdown of how to wire up these awesome little PCBs for your NeoPixel setup for your Saber. Um, I'm not going to be doing a whole NeoPixel uh, build, just showing you how to wire up these two PCBs. I'm going to be using the blade adapter. Of course, you'll need whatever hilt side adapter. Uh, your set will come with the two PCBs and the little spring pins. You're also going to need uh, a resistor. Um, I'm going to be using an inline resistor, but you, or sorry, uh, an onboard resistor, SMD. Um, you could also use an inline resistor like this. I'll show you how to do either. You're going to need whatever kind of wires you're going to be using. Um, today I'm using a 24 gauge wire for the positive and negative and 28 gauge wire for the data line. Uh, you're going to need some kind of a hobby vise, but if you don't have a hobby vise, you can get by with a little wood clamp. I'll show you how to do that. Also, some helping hands for the soldering is going to be really, really invaluable. You'll need a wire stripper of some kind. You're going to need a soldering iron and some solder. And I think that's it. So I'm ready to show you how to do these. Before we get going here, um, one thing I like to do is keep these little boxes around. You can also use the little plastic lids of, of containers for little tiny components that like to roll off tables. Um, keeping them somewhere where they're not going to roll off a table and they're ready and there when you need them. Just a little tip, uh, something to help you enjoy your experience a little bit more. I also failed to mention safety goggles, safety first kids. So as I put those on, you're going to see that I'm starting with the blade side just for today. Um, now I'm not going to be wiring this directly to NeoPixel strips um, because what I'm doing is I'm actually building an adapter for testing NeoPixel strips, but the wiring is the same. So I'm going to be using these little doodads and these wires are going to be the same as what comes off the end of your NeoPixel strip. And of course, for two NeoPixel strips, you're going to have two sets of wires. The red wire is the positive, the white wire is the negative, and the green wire is the data line. And all are labeled here beautifully. But the first thing I'm going to address is this little space right here. There's these, uh, these two squares. And uh, if you don't bridge those two squares with something, be it a resistor or a connection of some kind, this isn't going to work. It's made for you to put a little SMD resistor in, and that's what I'm going to do first. Now the legs of the resistor actually work really great for material to bridge these two squares there. You notice I've got them tinned. I'll use a little extra solder. Just to, just to bridge those. And there you go. That's a bridge. So that's probably the first thing to do. Snip that off, and that's ready to go. Now that center tracer on the other side is connected to the data pads. Next thing we need to do is attach our resistor and our data lines. Okay, you can see I've got my pads bridged and tinned and ready to go. Um, now because I'm using an inline resistor, now if you're using an SMD resistor, I could just take both my green wires and put them attach them to the green pads. But what I've done here is I've taken both my green wires and I've attached them both to the one leg of the resistor and the other leg of the resistor. I've got another section of, of wire and I'm going to attach that wire to the D-pad. That's how I'm going to connect them. Um, now the reason I'm not just connecting the resistor straight to that is because wires are meant to flex. Resistor legs are not. And so if, uh, if you're taking your blade apart, putting things back together a few times, eventually that resistor leg can weaken and snap off. You don't want that. So it takes a little longer to do this way. You need to use heat shrink, um, but it's going to be a, a give us a better result in the end. So like I said, SMD is the easier way to go, um, or the better way to go, but uh, most of us are going to be doing these. So bridging it, and then I only need to connect one green wire to one D-pad because these are all connected. The positives connected to the positive, the negatives connected to the negative, the Ds are connected. And I want to point out too that if this is going to be a lot to cram into that little section uh, of the blade where the adapter goes, um, you could just wire these directly to the D-pad, bridge those two little squares, and then put this little resistor on the hilt side. You could wire an inline resistor there if you feel like you have more room on the hilt side. As long as the resistor is relatively close to the PCB, um, you can basically do what I've done here on this side and just bridge that. So that, that's an option too. The resistor needs to be in the data circuit somewhere. Uh, this is a, a 470 ohm. You can also use a, anywhere 330 to 470 ohm. I've used both and they're fine. Now, one thing I like to do is instead of having my wires hanging off the end here, I like to 
lay them across the pad in the direction that they're going to go. It's a little trickier to do it that way because then when I want to do the other side, I have to fold them over gently and do the other side. But the end result is they're all going to be pointing towards the middle, which is where I want them pointed so they can go through the adapter rather than hanging off the sides and have to bend them and cram them and, and risk damage to them. Just one little thing you can do. It takes a little longer, it's a little harder, but it gets you a better result. Now on the second side here, I didn't need to do the data line because we already did that. And that's going to fold up in here. And essentially, that's our wiring now. We can uh, Now the nice thing about these adapters is that the uh, thickness of the even two of them together, two NeoPixel strips are going to fit through your adapter. Um, so you'll be able to put your adapter on after the fact. So in my case, because I'm making an adapter adapter, I'm going to put my two connectors through there, release this from my, my hobby vise. The whole thing fits through carefully and kind of snaps in place. And now that's the side that's going to face the pins. This is the side that's going to go into the blade. Um, if you want, you can put a couple of dabs of hot glue in there just to basically hold the PCB in from the back. Um, you could even get away. There's enough of a fit that you could just leave it. Problem is if you're going to drop your blade, um, the PCB might pop out. So a couple of dabs of hot glue in there. Not too much. Whenever you're using hot glue, I never use too much. Just to hold it in there would be good. And now this whole thing can slide into your blade. You can use Weld On 3 or whatever cement you're using to cement that inside your blade. So that is the blade side jumpered with the resistor ready to go. Okay, for the hilt side, we're going to do the pins first. And uh, so you could place the pins all in and then wire, solder them all at once. Um, but if you have a hard time soldering or you don't have good equipment, you might just want to do one at a time. Uh, you'll see that they just drop in from the side that's labeled hilt. And so now the pin is all the way through on the other side. And it's just sitting in there. So what I'm going to do is solder it. I want to be careful not to accidentally put a glob of solder on that bridges or connects any of these. I don't want to use any more heat than I need to. Just a little bit of solder. Make sure it's making contact with both. Let it cool for a second. And then just kind of tap it from the other side. And I'll feel the spring action of that pin. And it doesn't want to pop out. So I've got a a good start there. So I'll solder them all in and then we'll move on. Okay, all my pins are in. You may be wondering why are there seven pins if we only have a positive, a negative, and a data? Well, the reason is NeoPixel handles a lot of juice and uh, even with the pins maximum rating, if we only used one pin for positive and one pin for negative, it's possible to run enough juice to exceed the maximum that these pins can handle. So with seven pins in there, there's enough redundancy that the, there's lots of capacity for all that the, uh, the NeoPixel strips can suck out of your battery. Um, the seven pins are gonna handle it beautifully. Now, when stripping the wires with something like this, um, what I, you could strip a whole chunk of wire, but then you have excess wire flopping around that's, that's not protected from short circuits. So I like to just do as much as I need. Like that's a, just over a 16th of an inch. There's a ton, this is 28 gauge wire, so that's that's just barely enough. And so what I can do then is twist that, then I'll tin that, and I'll show you. This is my data line. So I'll use my helping hands and get it kind of lined up where I want it to go. Get my solder tinning basically means I'm doing that to the wire before I attach it so that no frayed wires can, that I, you know, they're so small I might not be able to see them, can accidentally bridge circuits. And again, I want to move my wire towards the middle so instead of shoving it through the hole, I want to lay it across the hole. Just a better practice. Do that a couple of times. Inspect it. That is a good joint. No short circuits. Nothing's touching anything that it shouldn't. And that one's ready to go. Now I'm going to attach my two uh, positive and two negative. Now for this saber, I'm making a long run. Generally, 28 gauge wire for the data is fine. If you want to use 28 gauge wire for, uh, for the power lines, um, it's, it's designed that you can double them up. Two 28 gauge wires for the negative, two 28 gauge wires for the positive. But I'm doing a particularly long run on this saber. So I'm actually going to use two 24 gauge wires for the positive and two 24 gauge wires 
for the negative to make sure I can handle all the juice that my NeoPixel needs. Now generally you want to work from the middle out so that you don't um, see so you have as much space as you need to work. There we go. So I've got my positive lines, my negative lines, my data line. Can I check all those? Those are all my spring pins. And that will of course mate perfectly. Now you don't want to you don't want to do this by hand because you could be off a little bit and bridge those. You want those to be in a, a cylindrical restraint before you test those, but that is ready to go. And now because those pins are nice and straight, that's going to fit perfectly into whatever Custom Saver Shop adapter I need to use. And when it pops through, like so, then only the spring portion is exposed, so it's very durable. And of course, those are held in from the back by the, the screws that come with your adapter. I won't be using this particular adapter in my setup. Um, but there you go. You've wired up your hilt side, you've wired up your blade side, and you're ready to uh, to move forward and finish your NeoPixel Saber. I hope that's been helpful as you wire up your Saber. Again, thanks for watching.